In this episode, Bob affixes the seats to the sailboat and shows how he made a graded aft hatch out of walnut. Welcome to the Art of Boat Building. We appreciate your support. In the last episode, many of you inquired about how I was going to secure the seats into the boat. And I'm going to do that with the classic Herrenschaft method. Now, many of you know that I run a boat building clinic online that's called Boat Building Boot Camp. And last summer, between the launching of Arabella and the boat show, five of the boat builders met and we had a boat builders retreat. So we went and saw sailmakers and several other uh, boat builders. And one of the things that we did was that we went to the Herrenschaft Museum that is in Bristol, Rhode Island. So while there, we got a private tour of the model room from Evelyn Ansel, who is the curator of the Herrenschaft Museum. So while we were there, there was a 12 and a half that was in the collection on display. And there I could see how that classic Herrenschaft method is used. And it is essentially putting a dowel pin right here in the center of the split seat. And then on the ends, it's a half of a dowel pin. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dowel pin for the center of here and, and a half a dowel pin then on each end, which will then secure the, the piece from sliding back and forth. It's essential that you still be able to remove the seats easily if you wanted to. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get some hardwood. So in this photograph, you can see that it appears that the pin is oak. Now I'm going to use walnut since I have walnut seats in the boat, and I think it'll be a nice, easy, smooth transition between the seats and that pin. While at the museum, I noticed this boat's graded sole. It had a very interesting lattice pattern. And I was really t taken by that and thought that that would really be an interesting project to do. So where I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to use it on the rear hatch here. Now part of it, it needs, that rear hatch needs to have some ventilation for the things that you're storing back there. And I think that that is going to be a really good project to use some walnut again in making that lattice hatchway. So the first thing we're going to do is to make those dowel pins for the seats. Well, now that I've got my little pins, whoops, now I've got my little pins all made, uh, what I need to do is to put a one inch hole here in between these two seats. 
Now the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to measure this, which is 10 inches. So I'm going to cut a 10 inch board and drill a one inch hole in it and then find the center line and then that way I can clamp that down here to drill these holes. Well, now that I've got my block made, what I can do is to line up the center line here with the joint between the two seats and I put this halfway so this is five inches. So what I want to do is clamp that to each seat and I want to put a clamp here that will grab the actual bracket Okay, uh, I put a piece of tape uh, on my drill here so that I know basically it is from the bottom here, it's one inch and three quarters, which this is three quarters and the seat is one inch. That way I'll know when I'm close to the bottom of it. By drilling this hole, it'll keep everything all in line. So now that I've got that drilled in there, what I need is on the end of my little plug here, I have a 3 8 inch um, tendon on there. So I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bit and because the center bit has made the center in there, I can find it very easily. Perfect. Now that I've got that one in, I need to put a half circle on each end of these two seats. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take them out of the boat and then put the aft end and the fore end and put them together and then clamp them and do the same thing that I did here. This seat design was created in 1914 by Captain Nat Herrenshoff. After nearly 110 years, this is a very well-tested method for securing the seat in 12 and halves.
So now that I've got the seats all secured, it's time for me to turn my attention to the aft hatch. So I've decided that the little lattice sections would be a half inch and then a half inch space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of graph paper and I'm going to lay out exactly what that grid is. So that way I'll know how long the pieces need to be and how many I need and uh, what their orientation should be to, to one another when they go across there. So I know that the hatch is uh, 12 and 3 quarters high and 21 or 20 and a quarter wide. So now what I just need to do is to draw this out and figure out how it's going to be laid out. So this is what I've got worked up. I've got the hatch here and I've decided that the styles here should be around two and a half inches. Um, that will vary, of course, once I trim it up. But what I end up with is 15 lattices going this way and seven going this way. So what I've done is I've taken these half inch pieces and added an eighth of an inch for the saw cut when I cut those pieces out and then did the math here. So basically two and a half and two and a half is five and 15 pieces across here times five eighths gives me nine and three eighths and add that five up there. And so basically what I end up with is 14 and three eighths by 12 and three quarters. So of course I'm gonna make these oversized so that I've got enough uh, extra. So I'll probably do this something like uh, 13 and a half, maybe by um, 15 and a half, something like that. And then on the other side, I did the same math, ending up with what size of a blank I need, which needs to be nine and three eighths wide by 20 and a quarter. So again, I'll do the same thing as I'll make this probably 10 inches and this, um, you know, somewhere like 21 inches, something like that. So now I've got this all laid out. I need to get some walnut and get it prepped. Well, I've got all of my half inch material all milled out now and I also cut a little half inch by half inch piece that I'm going to use as a registration pin. Now the way that I'm going to do this is the same way that a box joint is made. And if you're not familiar with what a box joint is, it's where you make a joint where the these tines fit together like this. And if you're unfamiliar with it, you can certainly just Google box joint and you'll find quite a few 
uh, videos on how box joints are made. And essentially, it is a matter of using a table saw blade and taking a board and moving it over notch by notch and using a registration pin. So instead of just the width of the blade, what I'm going to do is to put a dado blade in here so that I'll cut a half inch swash out of there at a time. Um, now you could do this with a router, but I think a router would be is not quite as accurate as a dado blade. So I have here a dado blade. So the dado blade here is a matter of several cutters. So first of all, you have two pieces like this that are eighth of an inch thick, and they go on the outside. And then there's a multitude of cutters in here that are different widths. So what I'm going to want to do is to come up with a half an inch. So these are an eighth of an inch bite, each one of them. So the way we stack these up is we take one, and then we make sure that these little teeth miss and fit in here, and then alter it this way, and then add the third or the outer, the other outer one on here like this. So then that will make up a half an inch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that with my calipers and if it's off a little bit, this set came with these little pieces of paper that you can put in there if you need to shim it a little wider. So I'm going to set that up now. I found that if I put one piece of paper in there that then I get exactly a half an inch. So now I need to mount that into the saw. So I've made a uh, insert in here because it would be very dangerous to run this without this and of course uh, the blade is too wide to go through this plate. I'll raise that up. Now what we need to do is to figure out so that the height of it is exactly a quarter of an inch. So I'll get some scrap wood and practice a few times to get that registrated in there and make sure that this is a half an inch, cuts a half so inch. I'm measuring my test cut here with my calipers, I can see that it's a little bit smaller than a half of an inch. And in fact, my little pin won't quite fit in there, nor will these blanks that I made won't quite fit in there. I mean, it's very close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dado out and add another little piece of paper in there. So it fits in there perfectly. I'm going to try one of these. And it fits in there perfectly as well. So now that we've got that set up, we can get started to set up our jig with our pin. So I've got it all dialed in now so that I've got a quarter inch depth here and a quarter inch depth here so that that fits and is nice and smooth across the top. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to have this pin that will come out here like so and then I will set this against the block here uh, or against my um, square here and I will make sure that from the blade to here is also exactly a half an inch and I'll attach the board, this board then to the square here with some screws. So the first thing I need to do is to cut a notch into each one of my blanks here to get started. Once I have those cut, then I can put my jig on there with my little pin.
Once I got the registration plan in place, I fitted the miter gauge. I placed the first dado cut over the registration pin to make sure that the future cuts to have a consistent spacing. You can see how I then moved the board to register the future cuts. After I make enough dado cuts for half the length I needed, I flip the board over and cut more dados for the desired length. I then set my saw fence to exactly half an inch and proceeded to cut the blanks into strips. It's important to use a fingerboard to keep the board tight to the fence and to get a consistent, accurate cut. Once I had my strips cut, I began to dry fit the first couple to make sure it all fitted up well. So as I'm fitting these, I'm also fine-tuning them a little bit. I've got a little piece of 80 grit sandpaper on there just to help flatten those out just a little bit. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm taking it over on the belt sander and I'm sanding the two sides for a couple of reasons. One, get the, sand, the uh, saw blade marks out of it and also to, um, I made them just a little oversized so that way it fits in here just perfectly. So I've been dry fitting them and then I've been putting just a dot of CA glue on each spot to hold it together.
Well, I've got it all sanded and really nice and level now. Um, what I decided, I changed my plan a little bit. I was thinking that I was going to let these uh, strips run underneath the border. Well, that just turned to be a quite a complicated process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it off right here at these uh, pieces that are the outside. And then I'm going to add uh, about two inches of material uh, around the whole thing. And I'll probably, I think right now, I'm going to make a, a half lap joint at the corners. So the next thing to do is to trim this off so I can get some accurate measurements. After getting some accurate measurements, I then cut some half lap joints into the border. Well, that fits nicely. Um, I left them a little long so they can trim it off. I may have to adjust the outside dimensions of the uh, panel, of the hatch, I should say, um, once I get it fit in the boat. But now it looks like it all fits nice and perfect, so what I can do now is get it all glued up. That fits pretty good. 
Now I did have to trim it up a little bit on the top here. Uh, took about a sixteenth of an inch or so off. So what I think I need now is to have some kind of little clips here to hold it when it's in there. You can see down here at the bottom, I've got a little trough for it to sit into. So I think that's the next thing I need to do is to figure out some kind of little turn things for right here. I found this little piece of scrap that I, I when I changed the seat post. Um, so anyway, it already has a hole in it. So I thought if I match this curve here, like so. You round it the corners a little bit. I think that will work really well. So I'm going to cut this out and polish it up. Well, I'm extremely happy with the way the hatch turned out. Now, the only thing left now is to get a coat of varnish on it. And since this episode we're running a little late, I'll show you the finished varnished piece in the next episode. I think it really adds to a nice classic feature of the boat, and I'm just really happy the way it turned out. So as always, thanks for watching, and remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.